Hi, welcome back to Genial Stars. I'm your tour guide, Luna. Today, we'll explore how a low mass star like Sun evolves from a hydrogen burning main sequence star to red giant, white dwarf, and eventually black dwarf. So, let's fast forward in time and witness the Middle Ages, final years, and death of these giant stuffs. When a sun like star first begins to shine, the core, 10% of its total mass, consists of hydrogen. In a span of 10 billion years, the hydrogen in its core gradually burns into helium through nuclear fusion. At the end, a helium core is formed, marking the end of the hydrogen burning, which also terminates the original pushing out force that balances with the pushing in force of gravity. As a result, gravity squeezes in and the star begins collapsing on itself. Ironically, this action led to a seemingly counter effect. While the core shrinks, the pressure within the core skyrockets, which accelerates the helium particles inside, thus increases the core temperature. Since heat flows from region of higher temperature to lower temperature, the hydrogen burning shell around the core becomes hotter as well, where nuclear reactions proceed at a higher rate. As the core becomes hotter, the outer surface expands, the star becomes bigger and bigger. Heat is transferred and spread out through the expanded surface, so each bit of the surface turns cooler, while the star then keeps sending its energy out to the surrounding at higher rates due to the expanded area. While the outer layer keeps expanding, cooling down, which by the way earns the star the name Red Giant, the inner core continues to contract and heat up, eventually reaching 10 to 8 kelvins. The helium flash process occurs under this extreme phenomenon where three helium nuclei fuse into a single carbon nuclei. It is indeed a flash, fast and furious, lasting only a few years but produces a tremendous amount of energy, too much that it reverses the evolution. The core begins to expand where the outer shell of the star begins to contract because it does not receive as much energy as before the helium flash. The star becomes smaller, hotter, and less luminous. In the next few million years, helium now burns steadily to carbon in the core. When the carbon core is formed, it contracts and heats up as does the helium core before. Similarly, the nuclear fusion happening in the outside layers are accelerated. These unstable energies cause stars to shed mass in a stellar wind that is a billion times stronger than our current day solar wind. In a thousand years, the outer layer of material is fully ejected, forming an alpha halo-like disk called a planetary nebula, leaving a bare, hot carbon core. Eventually, when the planetary nebula spreads out, the central star cools down and becomes the main object. We call this a white dwarf. The leftover product white dwarf does not have enough mass to fuse carbon into heavier elements. Eventually, the core does not have the pushing out force against gravity, so it shrinks to a stable condition, very faint, very dense. They occupy the right end area of the HR diagram. The best known example is Sirius B, the companion star of the brightest star in the sky. So, what is the force that keeps white dwarf from forever collapsing? That is what we call electron degeneracy, which are electrons' interesting tendency to keep a personal space. This condition, though, only holds true for stars below 1.4 solar mass. We think that stars start out with 8 solar mass will lose enough materials in stellar wind and fall under this category. For stars above the limit, electron degeneracy does not work anymore since they are just simply not enough to resist the great gravity. We will come back to that later. Now, let's just take a moment to appreciate how dense white dwarf is. In a white dwarf, the mass of the sun is compressed into the volume of the earth. A single teaspoon of white dwarf weighs 10 tons. Because of electron degeneracy, they remain at that stable stage where the energy is radiated away. The star will be a burned out hulk called black dwarf which are yet to happen in our current stage of universe since it takes billions of years for the starlight to truly extinguish. Thank you for watching episode 6, Journey of Stars. 
In this episode, we explore how Sunlight Star evolves from a main sequence star to a fast expanding red giant, how carbons form in its core, and how the star ejects material in the form of planetary nebula and leaves a carbon beer core known as white dwarf. This episode is produced by me along with my project instructor, Mr. Decorado. In the next episode, we'll witness the explosion of supergiants known as supernova and see the aftermath of this wonder, maybe neutron star and later black hole. Please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in the coolest and most unfathomable objects in the universe. Enjoy your day and don't forget to keep looking up to the stars. Thank you.